All right, time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss transformation of functions, part two of the video series. Uh, today we're going to discuss yeah, vertical and horizontal stretching and reflecting off the x and y plane. Um, this is really helpful in uh, based on understanding equations and graphing in general. So let's just start with the x y plane. We'll actually um, uh, explain this through an example. We'll look at f of x. Say f, f x equals just cosine x. And this is if you see my other video and you'll on trig and what cosine is and how to graph it. So this is basically a graph of uh, cosine. It has the highest value of 1, lowest value of negative 1. And it, it just goes up like this and it goes some, it's something like that. And it goes on and then it goes on. And this is just pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So this is, yeah what is this? This one is 3 pi over 2 or 270 degrees and here is 360 degrees or 2 pi. You look at my other video on what radians are, and this is just pi or 180 degrees. Um, yeah, this is a uh, plus one. It's the highest value of plus one and negative one. So basically, you now if we want to uh, transform it through this way, let's go vertically stretch it. Vertical stretching. Yeah, so we'll, we'll let's say we want to graph y equals c times f of x where c is greater than 1 okay so this is well c is greater than 1 all so what this means is for every value of f of x or in this case cos all we're doing is timesing it by c so let's go with example let's go example uh, c equals 2 so then we'll have y1 equals to 2 times cos x and so basically this is just all we're doing is vertically stretching it so every every value we're going to times it by 2 so at at f, x, uh, at f of 0 this is just cosine 0 this is 1 so times it by 2 so it's going to be 2 so it's going to be like this and then at 0 this is 0 times 2 it just stays there so it goes like this and then at this is pi so then this is 1 times it by 2 it's going to be negative 2 it's going to be like this so all we're doing is vertically stretching it. And then it goes back to zero, because this is zero times two is zero. And then and then this is two. So th this this graph would be two times cos x. Or y1 equals two times cos x. So now let's say we want to compress it. It's vertical. That's stretching. Let's go compression. Vertical. Yeah, compression. So basically, we're going to do uh, y2 equals just 1 divided by c uh, times f of x. Yeah, so basically, yeah, this 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 uh, stretches it. This this compression is, is against c is greater than 1. Let's do an example of, example of y, yeah, y2 equals, let's see, is 2. So let's go 1 over 2 cos x. So this is very similar here, except number of times by 1 over 2. So at 1 to times by 1 over 2 is going to be here, 1 over 2. And it's going to go back to 0. 0 times 1 over 2 is 0. And it goes, so it goes like this. And this is, uh, yeah, this is negative 1 over 2. And that's this value. So then, yeah, we'll just uh, write, write it down. So this value is just, yeah, this is just 1 over root 2 cosine x. So that's compressing it. Whereas, yeah, this original one is just this. Okay, so we got that one. Let's uh, look at uh, horizontally stretching. So we'll write that down. Horizontal stretching and compression. Okay, so this one's a bit uh, different than the other one. It's, uh, this is, it seems like opposite of it. So let's go y3. This one, if we want to stretch it, we'll actually go y3 equals cosine 1 over c times x. So what what this is actually doing is, well, let's say, so let's say, yeah, this is for, or general, we'll just go f of, f of 1 over c x. So where c is again greater than greater than 1 and in this case let's go uh, 2 let's go example c equals 2 and then for the cosine 
So let's just draw the let's just y accent new ones to make it easier. So we'll look at the, this is just the regular uh, cosine function. This this one is just cosine x. So if we were to look at negative yeah, so we'll know one over cosine x. This is again one. This is yeah, this is negative one. So basically what here what we're doing, let's say at cosine of zero, zero times one over c is gonna be the same thing. So it's gonna be here. And now at let's say this is pi over two. So let's go at pi over two. Well we know that cosine pi over two equals zero. But then if we're dividing by two, so then, so for y three, we're gonna have cosine one divided by two times pi over two. So then this one's actually, yeah, this is actually pi over, yeah, pi over four. So what what th what this means is that at pi over two, it has the same value as cosine. But that, but that's at pi over four. If this is, this is pi over four. So then, that, so it's saying at x is this. Y three. Oh, this is cosine. Is cosine of pi over four. So it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna be shifted. So now we're stretching it here. So yeah, we're actually stretching it here. So it's gonna be something like this. Yeah, and, and, and whatnot. So then let's say this is um, pi. So add pi, let's write it here. Add pi, or add pi, or x equals pi. Um, yeah, we have cosine pi equals negative one. But then for y3, we'll have cosine one over two times pi, or pi over two, this is just equal to zero. Yes, yeah, this is equal to zero. So then it's going to be here. It's going to be something like that. And then it goes on like that. So it, it's something like this. So this stretch is may look a bit bad, but it's stretching. So this is cosine. Yeah, this is x over 2. So now if we want a compression, a horizontal compression. If we were to compress them. All we do is basically, yeah, this this can be the opposite. Yeah, this is gonna be y. Let's go four equals to cosine two times x. This is just the example, and in general form, we'll have y four equals cos or f of c times x, where c is again greater than than one. So in in this example, this is let's go example. So now, if we were to graph this one. So all we do now is it's similar to this one. So let's go look at let's look at at x equals zero. Well, two times zero equals zero, so it's gonna be the same value. It's gonna be still there. But now at let's go at um yeah, let's go at pi at x equals pi over two. We'll have two times pi over two equals to pi. So basically, what we have here is cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. But then y3 is equal to cosine 2 times pi over 2. So then this equals to cosine pi. So basically, we're compressing it because we're taking the value of cosine pi, which is negative 1. So we're actually getting there earlier. So it's going to be shifted this way. It's gonna be we're gonna shift it all the way here. So it's gonna be actually here. And then this value is gonna be something like this. It's, it's actually gonna be something like this. I'm not sure I might have drawn a bit wrong. It's actually gonna look something like this. So it's it's actually yeah it's gonna look something like that. So it's actually being compressed and whatnot. So this one would be cosine two x. So the, yeah, so basically this is similar to this one. This one is if it's c time or two times cos x, this is stretching. 
one over C, one over two times cosec is compression, but this one is gonna be if it's inside the brackets, uh, the opposite. This, this is this is actually compression one over two or one over C, and then stretching is, yes, yeah, uh, no, this is actually stretching. This is actually compression. So two times x. So the last one we look at is uh, reflecting. Let's go reflecting. Well, this one's an easier one. Let's just say we have, um, yeah, y equals f of x. So basically, and let's just say it's a random function. The, we don't need cos x anymore. Let's go, just go like this. this is uh, y? This is x. Okay, let's let's draw something like like this. Let's go. Say something easier. Let's go let something like this. Let's like have a parabola or whatnot. And we'll call this f of x. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay, so now let's let's say we want to graph y one equals negative f of x. So this this is all we're doing. This is actually reflection off. Reflecting off of uh, x axis. What I mean is. So this is a mirror image here. So this basically every value here we're gonna go negative. So if it's here we're gonna go negative then. So basically, so this if this is one, this would be negative one. And then so it would go like that, something like that. And this one is uh, yeah, this is just negative f of x. And it's a mirror image. So you can see the mirror image. Mirror image. And then if we have let's say y two equals f of negative x what this is saying now for every value here let's say this is f of 2 or whatever f of 2 we're gonna take that same value but we're gonna go negative of it this is yeah that's all we're doing so now basically if we go to negative here negative 2 negative yes yeah, so if we go f of this is negative negative 2 this would just equal to f of 2 so basically we're mirror imaging it here. And then so this one is actually gonna be like this. And then this this is just f of negative x. So this is a reflection off the y axis. Or reflecting off of y axis. Well this one's a bit easier. That, that, that's all negative. If it's outside, it's uh, x axis inside, it's y axis. So yeah, you could actually uh like if you apply these all to um any complex example, whatever, I'll probably do that later. You can see that you can, it's easy to graph once you understand all this. So this is basic compression and uh, yeah, horizontal compression. If you if it's c times x, f of c, and this is <coughs> stretching is one over c x, whatnot. This is vertical compression, stretching. Well, hopefully uh, you learned. I uh, might do an example, a complex uh, example, just to show you how easy it is to graph knowing this. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another mad easy solution.